um, your being here and want to uh, welcome you to the inaugural session. Chris told me to say that. Um, of, <laughs> of the Kilgannon Breakfast Series. And well, I don't know if they're breakfast. We're testing this out. So you're our guinea pigs. Um, but this is the first session that we're going to be having. We're going to have them pretty frequently, maybe every two or three months. Uh, we'll have different topics we're going to cover today. We're talking about false advertising. And our speaker this morning is uh, Jay Myers. Um, and he is a um, IP practicing partner IP attorney with uh, Seiforth Shaw, happens to be our attorneys. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, but uh, Jay is back. I'm going to give you a little bit of background on Jay. Um, he's a Columbia University undergrad, Vanderbilt Law School. Uh, he's a partner in the intellectual property group of Seiforth Shaw, and he's practiced trademark and copyright law for 13 years. And he's reg regularly represented uh, advertising agencies and advised on ad clearance matters, infringement, and related issues for many years. He has been recognized, this is the most important thing, he's been recognized by, um, as one of the Georgia legal elite in intellectual property by Georgia Trend Magazine and a rising so star by Super Lawyer Magazine. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, um, then he said, is that sufficient? And I said, that's sufficient. Um, you, you, know, you read that perfectly. Thank you very much. Uh, and you wrote that well. Uh, anyway, so we're going to be filming, as you see, and uh, this will be put on YouTube. And, you know, Devin's walking around with the camera stick and going to be taking up. So if you don't mind, you know, we'll be filming how everybody's reaction is. So uh, enjoy. I'll turn it over to Jay. Uh, enjoy. And I think you want some... Interact? Yes, I do. I, I want to um, <laughs> encourage everyone to to, um, to interact. This is uh, well. First of all, thank you, Rena. Thanks for having me here. This is great to be here. I'm, I'm delighted to be the kickoff person for. Uh, oh, you thank you. Yeah, I do. That's great. Helpful. Um, so let's see. All right. So um, anyway, it's great to be here. Uh, today I'm going to talk about false advertising. This is just the basics. It's an overview. I know all of you probably have had experience with false advertising issues. I know that in the room today we have people from the agency. We also have clients and prospects of the agency. So if you're an advertiser or you're an agency person, um, I know you probably all have a, a good idea of what false advertising is. Hopefully today we can put some legal framework around, around your operational knowledge. And that's really what it's intended to do. It's any one of the topics that we'll talk about today could be a multi-hour presentation. So it's really more of a survey. And, and the other thing I want to say is please do ask questions, interact. I hope this is an interactive um, session because if I stand up here and talk for 30 minutes, it's going to be dreary. <laughs> so, um, let's see. The purpose of this slide, and I hope, can everybody read this slide? The purpose of this slide is to say, this is important stuff. Uh, this, is a, this is the fear of God slide. This is just in the past two months. You can see um, major companies going to battle, going to war on false advertising issues. And, uh, and so, you don't want to be one of these companies. If you can avoid being a defendant in a lawsuit uh, over a false advertising issue, that would be very good. Um, I think that this is not atypical. Uh, if you went at any given point and looked at the last two months worth of headlines about false advertising, you're going to see very similar um, headlines like this. Uh, I think the economic downturn has probably had an effect and in increased sensitivity to these issues. Advertisers are pushing the envelope, trying to obtain market share in a down market. Competitors are seeing those ads and, and, and thinking, this looks like abuse to me, this looks false. And so you're seeing, I don't, I don't think this is an uptick, but I think there's an, a heightened sensitivity to the issue. So it's time to be careful with your advertising. I'm going to come back to some of these, ad, some of these, um, some of these cases too, hopefully, during the presentation. Okay. So here's the roadmap. We're going to do three things today. Talk about the legal landscape, and I'm going to just spend a few minutes about the five regimes of false advertising and who is enforcing these cases and how they work. Then we're going to talk about some specific categories of what is false advertising, um, specific issues, and then I'm going to t uh, finish it up with some guidelines. And hopefully at the end, if we have time, we can talk about social networking and some of the other hot topics that are, that are out there. And if you have questions, hopefully we'll have time for that. But again, ask questions in the middle if you, can, if, if you would like. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you these two slides. This is the first slide, Lanham Act, Federal Trade Commission Act. Then you've got the National Advertising Division of the Better Business Bureau, and then state consumer protection statutes. 
So I'm going to just walk through these very quickly and, and what their purposes are. The Lanham Act is the main um, law at the federal level about false advertising. And, that, and the primary function of the Lanham Act, or the primary um, way in which that is invoked is by competitors. So this is when, when an advertiser puts out an ad that a competitor views as being false, misleading, or mischaracterizing of the competitor's product. So you're, you're typically seeing the main concern here is competitor harm and competitors are the people bringing, these are you know, big time federal litigation um, over advertising. Typically it's mostly involved with, with um, obtaining injunctive relief, typically that's what you're trying to seek in a Lanham Act case. Um, damages are rare, but they are available in some egregious cases. The Federal Trade Commission Act, which is um, uh, the FTC's mandate, is Section 5 of that act. This is primarily concerned more not with competitor harm, but with substantiation and consumer protection issues. And you see the FTC getting involved in numerous cases where um, an ad has been made, an ad has been put out into the market saying something objective, like, like in the case of the um, if you saw back on this prior slide, this Kellogg's case, okay? Kellogg's, Kellogg's put an ad out into the market saying that if kids eat frosted mini weeds, there will be a 20% increase in their attentiveness. Has anybody heard of that case? <laughs> Hard to believe that they could say that, but they did. Um, I hope nobody here is from Kellogg's. <laughs> Anyway, the FTC took action on that and it turned out, and that's a perfect example of, of something that needed to have been substantiated. And yes? Will the FTC do that on their own or would the competitor vote most likely to call them? There are many ways in which the FTC can get started. It's a great point. There's no private right of action under the FTC Act, so it's only the FTC that can go after these things. No, no citizen can, can make the FTC do anything, like, like in a criminal matter. The, um, cons they are triggered by consumer complaints, though, in many cases, and they're also triggered by um, if, a, if a, an, a NAD case is not resolved successfully, the National Advertising Division will refer cases to the FTC, and then um, um, sometimes the FTC will act on its own in particularly egregious cases. So, yes. Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. You know that um, the government is really, the awareness is heightened. Uh, childhood obesity and childhood diabetes and things that affect children. So when somebody makes a claim, that is that, are they sort of you're, you're, you're right on point. Um, and the FTC is particularly concerned about, about safety issues, health issues, weight loss issues. Any claims of that type um, are, are red flags and, and, and you're going to see a, an increased scrutiny of those. So let's see. The remedies, uh, the FTC has, has some strong powers in its favor. It can force people to make corrective advertising, cease and desist orders and so forth. Most things are settled re uh, reasonably. but. Um, it does have the ability to impose sanctions and so forth. 